Live baseball games can be very complex. Multiple runs, runners on bases and slider parameters are constantly on the move between set keyframes. It becomes necessary to apply stop keyframes to keep the parameters from moving when they are not meant to change. Dealing with these extra keyframes can get entangled, difficult to manage and slow you down especially if you have to recover from mistakes. What follows is a workflow that requires minimal keyframing. Another feature of FCPX is that it retains a title settings when it is split into two. Any change you make to baseball bug carries over the cut. In other words, it is not reset to its original state. Begin by applying the baseball bug title to your storyline and dragging its length out for as long as needed. Set its appearance features up. These will be maintained throughout any cups for the title's length. Here we are at the beginning of a game. As the first pitch is made and we see that it is a missed swing, select the baseball bug title and play through it. Reselect the later portion. In the inspector, slide the strike slider until one is revealed or double click on the value and type 1 and enter. Move the playhead until the next pitch is made. This one is a ball, play the title again, and adjust the ball slider to show 1. Notice that the first strike is still displayed, without keyframing or having to reset the strike's control. Continuing to the next pitch, we see it is a wild pitch, another ball, another cut and move the ball's count to 2. At the next pitch, a called strike, make another cut, set the count to 2 and 2. On the next pitch, our batter hits the ball, follow with the playhead until it's clear whether he gets on base or not. At this cut, in the inspector, update the runners on base control to show on first. Reset the balls and strikes controls to zero to set up for the next batter. The first pitch is a passed ball inside. Blade the clip and set balls to one. The young base runner steals second. Blade the clip again. Reset the on first control and set the on second control. At this point you may want to keyframe a reveal for additional information. Change the text to stolen base and set the playhead to a few frames into the clip and manually set a keyframe on the reveal parameter. Move the playhead a few more frames. Shift, right arrow. And advance the value to 100. After a couple of seconds or so, manually set another keyframe on the reveal 100 then shift. Right arrow and reset the reveal back to zero. This workflow is the easiest to execute, especially in a hurry. The same thing can be accomplished with keyframing ball, strike, and out counts, but requires using stop keyframes for a lack of a better term. Any set keyframe will hold its last assigned value indefinitely. However, if going in reverse is required, such as resetting values back to zero, then a stop keyframe must be applied on one frame, then the playhead needs to be advanced one frame and the value set to zero. Unless you want to count down in the animation.